Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Open Road a podcast where we explore different aspects of open source and community best practices. My name is Brian Prophet. I am with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. And I'm Rich Bowen, also with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. And in this series of segments with the Open Road, we've been focusing on foundations and what they bring to the open source and free software communities and projects with, with that they serve. Um, and we've been asking our guests questions around you know, how foundations work and how they interact with those projects. And for this sequence, we the question that we put to all of our guests has been around you know where where a foundation sort of fits does it fit as a driver for new projects and and or does it exist to support existing projects and you might think that that's kind of a weird question to ask cuz a lot of times they do both but over our experience in in the ecosystem rich and i have both noticed that not all foundations, you know, cover that e equally. And sometimes members of the press will come to speak to you as either a foundation director in my in my experience or as as a project uh, contributor and ask, what's your roadmap for the for the coming years? They would say, for example, what kind of projects are you pursuing at Apache over the coming five years? And, and we didn't have an answer to that. And that was kind of the, the genesis for this question. Right. And then you have foundations like the Linux Foundation, which, you know, they probably will have that kind of planning and foresight because they are constantly seeking to, you know, drive forward new technologies um, and, and, and foster emerging technologies as they go. So there's a lot of room on here uh, in this question. So we put the question to our guests. Well, let's take a look at the answer that Guy Martin gave us and, and hear what he has to say. Yeah, I mean, I think that foundations um, generally have kind of a specialty or an area, a technology area that they're in. Although at Oasis, we have a very wide technology remit, everything, you know, from blockchain to cybersecurity to, you know, the original formations of the SGML thing that we were doing. But I think that I, I view it as the foundation is there to provide support for those projects. And so it's not about necessarily driving that technology direction as being a supportive entity. Right, because the the challenge you have is if you try to drive too much and try to drive too much of the of the vision of of an individual project, you get to a point where it's no longer governance; it's you know oppression. <laughs> We're going to drive everything you do, yeah. um, and so you know providing that neutral place for governance and really letting those those projects flourish. But also understanding, okay, hey, there's this adjacent work that that you know you should be talking about, right? So let's take blockchain for example, and we have we have baseline, uh, the the DLT agnostic uh, way of verifying private transactions in, in private blockchains, but using the public Ethereum mainnet and only leaving public data on that, right? Um, and finding a way to say, okay, hey, blockchain is doing this, and hey, there's this, there's these adjacent things that that blockchain is doing in terms of, you know, like we have a great relationship with the EEA, the Ethereum, uh, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, and figuring out how you be a good steward of those projects and find other related areas and kind of connect the dots and get projects talking to each other is a much more important thing to me than saying, we're gonna dictate exactly what you do. Now, you also have to provide a balance. And it's funny, the podcast I was just on, we were talking about providing a balance there to say, hey, you've got to have some some governance. You've got to have some rules that, of the road and guardrails that everybody follows. That's a really important thing, I think, for foundations is, is to provide that that guardrails and sort of that that overall vision of finding adjacent work, but not, not saying, well, this is the only vision you can have. So by the way, that was Guy Martin, the executive director of Oasis Open. Um, and who had come to chat with us earlier. So interesting insights from Guy. I, I think maybe I expected a little bit of a different take from Guy because Oasis is about 
standards. And so you 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 define the standard, and then that standard drives the the production of open source. Of course, Oasis is this is this dual thing where they they have standards and they also have open source, and they're deeply intertwined. So they the foundation doesn't push a particular technological agenda on the standards, but once the standard is established, that does drive the open source implementation of it. So, right. Yeah, so they, they got a little bit of a unique take on that, but his answer was seemed to be very much driven around how do we well, how do we help all these projects work together? Yeah. That was a big part of it. Um, and he seemed to emphasize that more than uh, the governance and and the rules of the road, as he called them. I mean, they're certainly in there, but the emphasis seemed to be more on the inter interconnectivity uh, between projects, yeah. um, which you know makes sense from his point of view because that they're that's kind of where their focus is. But um, but I definitely agree with with his separating. Uh, technical direction mm -hmm. from from governance type issues and and having the foundation be be concerned with with governance rather than driving the technical direction that's kind of how i have seen uh project governance and foundation governance over the years yeah so well, i came and, into this with a bias obviously so. sure 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 and 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 it's funny because i i kind of think that there that that is an aspect of foundations we haven't really discussed yet on any of these episodes. Um, the the idea of getting other projects working together this is this is something that we sort of kind of do in our day jobs at Red Hat, where you know some of these projects were built by communities that were trying to solve a thing, a specific um, itch. Uh, so to speak, um, and they, when they did that, they weren't thinking necessarily about other projects that might be doing related things, um, and and so as a corporation, Red Hat has in the past and will again, kind of say, yeah, but y'all can work together, um, and your your technology can come together and integrate and do better things for end users. And, and Guy seemed to emphasize that as a role for foundations too, which to be honest, it didn't really occur to me until he actually said it out loud. Yeah, and I think that at, at, at Apache, and of course we're talking with Shane Kirkery later and maybe he'll say some of these things as well, but, but at Apache, we, we frequently have the situation where we'll have two projects that are implemented two or more projects that are implementing the same concept independently, and there's no there's no compelling them to to merge, work together, do the same thing. But that naturally flows out of them being in the same space. Yeah. Anyway, I'm kind of stealing from our our uh, our guests, so let's let's hear what uh, some of the rest of them have to say. Well, okay, so specifically, we put the same question to Shane Kukuru, who is the vice chair of the Apache Software Foundation, and um, his answer was this. It totally depends on the foundation. I mean, mm -hmm. just like anybody who asks, you know, when should we go to a foundation? My question is, what are your goals? There's no answer, right? You need to understand what you, where you want to go, and found, you need to understand where foundations are going to take place, people or projects rather, let's say that. Uh, so at, at Apache, we are purely here to support projects. We do not drive projects at all. Um, this is shown even by our incubation process where we don't, as an organization, we don't go out and look for projects. We just wait till they show up, which really surprises some people, um, but you know, we're still successful at it, which which makes sense for Apache, right? We, uh, we have that sort of a very independent, uh, broad scale, uh, niche, so to speak. Um, but there are plenty of pro foundations that, that do have a drive, something like the Python Software Foundation. They do drive the community forward, right? They have a single community. They understand their culture, um, how the language wants to evolve. And the foundation itself, in conjunction with the community, you know, they help each other move forward, right, in a very purposeful way. Um, and that makes sense for 
uh, Python itself. Um, I think the big question here is a lot of the single purpose foundations uh, with a single project really um, are really there to drive them. And a lot of the bigger project foundations at this point are, are there to support, right? We, we understand in general how an open source project can really grow and become a foundation leader of um, software or culture, or whatever. Uh, so foundations understand that, right? You, you kind of know once you get to the right experts when you're going to need that support. So I think that's um, it, it totally depends on the scale of the foundation, whether it's going to be driving or whether it's going to be supporting. So Shane um, emphasizes scale. And, and, and that is pretty much a, a logical place for somebody from the Apache Foundation to start um, because, again, Python you know, is one thing. Um, and the Apache Software Foundation uh, is, is, is many. <laughs> so, um, but what was, what was interesting to me is that even as he says, and, and I'm not disputing this, even as he says that the Apache Software Foundation is there to support, I think it's very clear, though, that support isn't really a passive thing in this context. And perhaps with any of the foundations, because the incubator process itself, and 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 Rich, this is certainly your bailiwick more than mine, but to me as an outsider, the 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 incubator process is definitely supporting, but it is also laying down some rules, you know, for projects coming yeah. in. So support is not passive. But that's again the distinction between the the foundation driving uh cultural and governmental standards rather than driving the technical direction. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, the incubator is definitely about building a community that looks like us, a community that looks like Apache, but it's very frequently the case that the people that are the mentors on, a, on an incubating project know nothing whatsoever about the technology space, which often frustrates the people on the project, right? Because they're, they're looking for, for maybe something else. But uh, the, the, the few projects that I've been involved with incubating, I didn't know anything about the technology. I was there as, as, uh, as advisor on the governmental side, on the cultural side. Um, and so I, I think that uh, it, it would have been interesting to talk to some people from some of the more uh, single focused foundations like, like say WordPress or or Python. Python's kind of bigger than that nowadays, mm -hmm. but but uh, yeah, maybe we can do that some other time. Exactly. More people to interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because and and you know, but that's a clear de delineation between you know, you know, guy is focusing on trying to get the technologies to work together, mm -hmm. and 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 you know, Shane is emphasizing the work of the Apache Foundation, which is really not that, um, yeah. you know, you know, which, which if you look at the list of all the projects that are in the ASF, certainly, you know, some of them are going to work together, but not all of them. So yeah. that, that just can't be a priority. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's interesting to see how that kind of shakes out. And I think Shane's mention of scale um is probably one of the the folk the focal points for where this where this balances out he also he also calls back very uh explicitly to our former question uh, saying that you know as a as a project that's that's looking to to be part of a foundation you need to figure out what what your goals are you need to figure out what you're looking for in a foundation whether you're actually looking for um, say an umbrella organization that's going to drive particular technologies or whether you're looking to just do your own thing and get support from the foundation. And so these two questions are very tightly tied together um, and, and should be tied together by the, the project leaders rather than run the, the foundation per se. You know, you, you go, you find what you're looking for and so that we have yet another it depends answer, which is mm -hmm. as it should be. 
Sure. And, and I, you know, having done these interviews, uh, spoiler, we're going to have a lot of it's the yes. questions <laughs> uh, answers. So, but it, it's, it's tricky because, and, and I think the one thing that we're going to get out of this series uh, around foundations is that there is no one size fits all solution um, for foundations. But I think that again is why we should be talking about it because um, if people, you know, I had people coming to me as part of my job and saying, I would like our project to be part of X foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and we, the first thing we do is go back to them and say, why? Why? Um, what are you looking for? <laughs> why yeah. do you want to do that? Um, and, and that we, you know, that sets us up as sort of an obstacle, you know, because people are like, no, just get out of my way. I want to be a part <laughs> of this foundation. But they don't know. Sometimes they don't know the answer to the question. And, and that kind of, you know, kind of proves our point, which is you, you don't know what you need this. It's, it's not just about, to be cynical about it, it's not just about the press release. Um, right. You know, so, and, and so I want to, we want to kind of get to our, our, our final uh, guest on in this series, uh, Vicki Pursuer, who uh, works a lot as a consultant uh, with uh, free and open source projects uh, over the years. Uh, Vicki has her own take on uh, this particular question about how foundations should serve their projects. Almost sorry to say this, but it depends. Um, <laughs> right, it does depend upon the reason the foundation was formed in the first place. Mm -hmm. For instance, there are things like the Drupal Foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, or the Python Software Foundation. Those drive those projects and they're very active in making sure those projects move forward and they are foundations. Um, and then there are more things like the Apache Software Foundation, Eclipse Foundation, and those are more oversight and support and help to provide the infrastructure both socially and governance and you know, for those projects to be more successful. So there isn't going to be one reason for foundations to be to exist right there's just it really does matter a lot upon why the foundation came to being what the project needs so the examples that you cited the difference between them was that some of them were single project foundations and others were more umbrellas over multiple projects was that coincidental or do you think that there's a correlation there there's definitely a correlation there um, but some of the more, quote, single project things are actually umbrellas as well. So if you look at, for instance, the Python Software Foundation, very good example, originally came together to help the Python programming language move mm -hmm. forward. But now it's doing so much more than that, right? Now it helps to do fiscal sponsorship for Python projects. Um, it helps with Python meetups. Um, I mean, it does really a lot more and all of these satellite projects around Python that help to support the language itself. So it started as one thing and then it grew as the project evolved, as the community evolved. Um, but a lot of these uh, these things that are there to drive the projects, they are single project things, right? And like the Zig Foundation that launched recently, the Rust Foundation mm -hmm. launched recently. Um, I seem to be just coming up with programming language <laughs> examples, but, you know, Blender, I already mentioned Blender, yeah. right? Well, I told you, it depends. <laughs> it depends. It depends, but, you know, good for Vicki because she really just brought everything home um, with her answer because she summarized well all of the discussion that we've been having in this in, in this episode. Um, where and and I loved the fact that you know she emphasized something you brought up earlier about Python and you know we're not really picking on them but they're a great example of how they started as one thing and then moved and evolved to something completely different. Um, and, and your question to her in the middle of that was it just sort of brought that home in, in a really great way. You know when I was um, 
before we we did these interviews, I was doing some reading and particularly those of us who have been in open source for longer tend to have this mindset that there's there's six foundations, right? There's there's the ones that everyone knows. And and as I was reading, I came across a list of foundations that was literally hundreds of foundations that are around open source projects. And and, and I think that what we've seen over the past 20 years is going from let's make a software foundation to the more the more purpose-built foundations that provide a, a specific solution for a particular project or set of projects. And, and I think that that even, even the fact that we asked that question to begin with, it kind of reflects that that you know we have these gray beards. And and I I I I, I just I just loved looking through the list of foundations and how how they've gone and thoughtfully created a a thing that provides a solution for a particular set of people rather than just trying to do one thing for everybody. Yeah, it it and 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 you know Vicky kind of highlighted a couple of those too, you know, Rust and, and Zig yeah. and you know and how you know the joke was they seem to be about programming languages, but you're absolutely right. There are a lot more. I, I think I said it in the last episode, you can't throw a stick anymore without yeah hitting one of these things. And in the olden days, um, there weren't that many. Um, there weren't. And and I, big deal. I remember when WordPress decided to create a foundation and there was a lot of negative sentiment at the time. Why don't you just join one of the existing foundations? We've already solved this problem. We, we in our wisdom, know what you need. You should come to us. And they... They made their own because they had specific needs that they needed to solve. And it was, you know, in retrospect, it was the right thing for them to do. And 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 I think that we've learned a lot over the years that um, we don't, those of us that have been around from the beginning don't necessarily have all the solutions just because we're old and wise. And, and that's that's been um, kind of a recurring story over the years of open source. Agreed. And, and, and not to be uh, mischievous about this, but, you know, this, the conversation around foundations is very reminiscent uh, around the conversation about individual and different licenses as well. So that's, that's probably a whole set of episodes that we won't get to right now. But the, the idea that a foundation can be somewhat customized to serve mm -hmm. the needs of its particular memberships and projects yeah. um, is, is really interesting because we have this conversation around software licenses as well. Yeah. And, and, and if there's any conclusion, at least that I'm coming from uh, out of this episode is that there is really no one size fits all. Yeah. And I think that that's a, a good place to, to wrap this up. It, it depends. It depends. Excellent. Well, um, that, as Rich said, concludes another edition of The Open Road. Um, we look forward to uh, you coming with us, continuing with us on this journey as we uh, continue the conversation around foundations. So with that, um, my name is Brian Prophet. And I'm Rich Bowen. And we look forward to seeing you again on another edition of The Open Road.